Welcome everybody, come on in. Good to see everyone on their computers. Has anyone Zoomed before? It's a new thing, all the kids are doing it. Fantastic, welcome to the show. Uh, by the way, this is Billy Harrison, Los Angeles. There's Scott Conant in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona right there. I think most of you are in the tri-state area. Scott, someone told up signs that say, I love you, Scott. I told you, it's like a rock and roll show. I'm gonna, un that. I'm gonna unmute them right there. Ask to unmute. We wanna hear from Lisa. Unmute yourselves. I'm asking you to unmute. We wanna hear Scott's fans. He's got, he's got fans all over the world. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining. You clearly have great taste. I, I will tell you I that. I was just in Americana last week. Yes. I had a place in Scottsdale. I was just there last week. And you sent a bottle of champagne to her table. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah. He didn't know He didn't know anything about it. I'm sure he said that too. So. We're <laughs> ready for some info book. <laughs> I love to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for being here. I guess I, I was I forgot this has opened up to anyone all over the country. It's not just the tri-state area. Where are people coming from here? I want to know where Allison Black Goldberg is coming from. Where is that? I just where are you coming from, Allison? I'm in right outside of uh, New Buffalo, Michigan. Boom. We got Michigan in the house here as well. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Thank Let's you. See. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Let's see where everyone's from. Let's check. It just says, uh, there's so many people. Cheryl Pfeiffer. Where's Cheryl Pfeiffer coming from? North Carolina. Yep, Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. North Carolina. Thanks for being here tonight. Yeah. Where's, I'm just going to go around the room here. Yeah, you see that? Janine down on, on the bottom there is from Park City, Utah. Oh, there you go. Park holding up signs now. Now they're holding up signs, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jen, Jen Turnbill? Where are you from? I'm asking you to unmute. Hi, Jen. Where are you from tonight? Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Everyone is all over the country. Thanks for being here. Is anyone from the great state of New Jersey? I mean, I, yeah, yeah. They're all in jail, Billy. They're all, they're yeah, all exactly. Is anyone, <laughs> is anyone currently in the witness protection program right now? That's what we want to. We want to find out. Uh, folks, we're just going to let a few more people in. We're going to say hello to as many people as we can throughout the night. Please put your questions in the chat. Don't be shy. Cooking questions, chop questions, chefy questions, city meals questions, city meals on wheels questions. Where Billy gets his hair product questions. I mean, those are important things. Very important questions. This is, this is duck fat, ladies and gentlemen, straight from the kitchen, Conan. It's my new, uh, it's my new technique. It's great. You know, after we, after we make a foie gras torchon, I just grease up the pompadour. So it's perfect. And it's amazing for weeks. You don't have to, you don't have It's to pretty to strong. Go. Yeah, I only have to do it on Mondays and it lasts the whole week. You just get out of bed and boom. They're so Scott and I normally have a, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we normally have a hair competition, but tonight it will be the uh, Scott shows. We cook a little, are we cooking a little nudie? Is that what we're doing, Scott? Cooking nudie. Yes, yes. We're sir. cooking nudie. All right, but you're, I'm going to give you a formal introduction in a minute. Um, we're going to go one more minute, and we'll let a few more people in the room. It's great that we have everyone all over the country here tonight. Thank you for joining uh -huh. us, supporting City Meals. And remember, if it, if it gets too crazy, if it gets too crazy, I'm going to mute everybody, but then you can't hear. So if you're oh, here, I'm gonna mute that person right now. See, look, now it's quiet. It just says Lisa. We, we put the kibosh on Lisa. All right, we're gonna get the show on the road. We have a fun-filled hour together once again. Uh, thanks everybody for supporting City Meals on Wheels. This is Billy Harris in Los Angeles. My dear friend, Scott Conan is in Phoenix. Zach Berger is in New York City representing the McAllen. And then of course we have um, the City Meals on Wheels team in New York City. Uh, some of you that have attended our events in New York, obviously many of you know Scott. I've hosted the Sunday Suppers with Daniel Balud the past few years at Danielle. It was actually our last event before New York City and the world unfortunately shut down uh, in March. And we, we raised almost a million dollars that night in restaurant Danielle, which provided just from that event alone, 
127,000 meals to New York City's homebound elderly. So now we're doing it virtually. Um, so we can accomplish everything and we can all be home safely and with our friends and with our family and have a great cook along with Scott and learn how to make some great cocktails while supporting City Meals on Wheels. Also a couple quick shout outs that I wanted to thank American Airlines. They are the official sponsor for help making tonight possible. And I know there's some, uh, some of our good friends from American Airlines on here tonight. So thank you for joining. And thank you to Sonio Toscano for kindly donating the gift baskets to the raffle and the McAllen for donating the private tasting, which Scott is going to announce at the end of the night. But to uh, wet our beaks a little bit, to uh, warm up, the, I mean, it's only two o'clock in Los Angeles, so why not? It's definitely five o'clock somewhere, literally. So our good friend Zach Berger's here from the McAllen. He is in New York City. He's gonna make a great cocktail that's actually called from the Tiber to the Spey. The Tiber River is in Italy, of course, everyone knows that, and the Spey is in Scotland. And uh, I feel like uh, Alex Trebek, because you feel like a loser, because he seems to know everything. But uh, <laughs> there's also a Tiber River, river in southern New Jersey as well, which is actually a, a little integration of this cocktail. So before we get to Scott Conant, before I bring up Beth Shapiro, we definitely need a cocktail. So my good friend, Zach Berger, take it away. Thanks for sending me this gorgeous bottle. I think Scott has one or two in the cabinet as well. So take it away, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Billy. Thanks so much for having me. And, you know, to City Meals on Wheels, I really appreciate uh, being able to spend a little bit of time with everybody tonight, being able to talk about food, talk about drinks, talk about really doing something really special. So thanks again for having me. Um, a little bit about the Macallan. We're a Scottish single malt located in Northern Scotland in the Highlands. And there's often a conversation about what is the best way to enjoy your single malt and enjoy your Macallan. And quite frankly, it is however you want. So if you have a bottle of Macallan and cocktails aren't your thing, by all means, just serving it neat or on ice with a little bit of water uh, or in a cocktail is absolutely your choice and your preference. But we are doing a cocktail tonight with the Macallan 15 double cask. Double cask represents uh, a lot about the cask maturation that we have at the Macallan. We utilize two different types of oak. We use European oak, which is predominantly Spanish oak and American oak as well that has been seasoned with Oloroso sherry. So you're getting all sorts of different types of deep dynamic flavors and aromas that are coming from those different types of wood. You're gonna have baking spices, ginger, nutmeg, clove, and then you're gonna have these beautiful dried fruits, raisins, uh, apricots, maybe a little bit of fig or raisin. And all of that comes together. And American oak is providing a little bit of a vanilla, citrus, and black pepper. And it's incredibly dynamic, beautifully smooth. This is that 15 year old. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a cocktail based off of uh, a cocktail that I think many people are familiar with, which is a Negroni or a Boulevardier, depending on if you're a gin or a whiskey drinker. Uh, we are taking a little bit of Italian cocktail inspiration where we're adding a little bit of that sparkling white wine to it at the end, just to add a little bit of effervescence. But enough talking about it, but let's actually make a cocktail here. So there's a couple of tools that I have in front of me. This is a Macallan ice ball maker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna get this ice ball maker going. So that'll be ready by the time we're done with the cocktail. I'll leave that there just like that. We've got our glass. This is just a traditional rocks glass. My jigger for measuring and pouring. When you're creating anything, when you're creating a cocktail, you want that balance between sweet, sour, maybe a little bit of bitter, spicy, effervescence. Using a jigger allows for the proportions to be balanced so that you can create the most consistent cocktail so that when you're done with one, you can have another one. Uh, we've got our mixing glass here and I've got my spoon. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is I'm just gonna stick some ice in my mixing glass. You wanna use a good amount of ice because Yes, we're chilling it, but we also want that dilution. Dilution serves a lot as something that's gonna help lubricate and mix everything together and help everything melt. We are definitely gonna start off with the Macallan. We're gonna do one ounce, right on in. Now these proportions are based off of something that's gonna be able to celebrate and showcase each one of the flavors. So we're using a little bit more Macallan than everything else because I want those deep dried fruits. I want that single malt coming through as a really beautiful kind of a showcase. We're gonna put in the, the vermouth next. Now this is a cinnamon infused vermouth. What I recommend is using maybe one stick of cinnamon for every 
maybe four ounces or so. This is a full bottle. So I stuck in, um, I stuck in about six, seven sticks of uh, cinnamon in there, just to give that a little bit of that. We're doing three quarters of an ounce. And then we're gonna get our beautiful Italian bitter here. This is Campari. Uh, if you don't have Campari at home, but you're looking for something, maybe like an Aperol, anything's gonna really get that across beautifully there, which will be really nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour that. My bottle is stuck. How you doing over there, Billy? It happens, I was gonna say, it happens to the best of us. Someone already had a had question. It. Yes. Chad has a question they wanna know, can you make a single serving of cinnamon infused vermouth? Is that possible? Yeah. So what, when you're infusing something, making a single serving is, can be difficult sometimes because um, using say three quarters of an ounce, you're gonna use a really small part of that cinnamon stick and it's gonna be a little bit inconsistent. But if you wanted to do about four ounces of vermouth, with one cinnamon stick, that's a really small serving. You'll be able to have one, maybe two cocktails. And if someone's able to enjoy it with you uh, at home, that's probably the best best bet. But the beautiful thing about infusions is you can go really small or you can go really big in a full batch. I got the Campari open, so we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce in there. And then we're actually gonna put the sparkling wine in with the cocktail. We're not gonna put it just on top because we want those flavors to be uh, incorporated and integrated in there. So we're doing just about a half of an ounce here. We're using Prosecco today. Uh, I think that Prosecco adds a little bit of that extra beautiful sweetness to it that we were talking about earlier because we want that cocktail to be beautifully balanced. We're gonna stir here for about 15 to 20 seconds. Again, we, we will want the temperature. We want the cold to get there, but you also want that dilution, just a little bit of the ice melting. We're putting it on top of a large ice cube, which is gonna have very, very slow dilution because of the great amount of surface area. So we're gonna get a lot of that from the mixing in the cocktail. And Zach, how long do you infuse the vermouth for? How long oh, is that that's usually That's a great take? question. So I would say infusion can be anywhere between two hours to overnight. I wouldn't recommend with cinnamon doing anything longer than say, 12 or 18 hours, just because that can get, it can really overpower. Vermouth on its own already has a ton of herbs and spices and things in there that have been infused into that fortified wine to create the flavor palette you have. So having cinnamon in there for too long can actually over infuse. And then you've pretty much just got this cinnamon wine situation going on, which uh, I think you'd want to avoid. But two hours alone is gonna give you plenty of flavor and it's gonna really, really be sophisticated. This one has been overnight. Um, because sure. I really, I love, I love cinnamon. I love that flavor. So we're just going to strain what, this out. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that the custom Macallan uh, round ice ball making machine right next to you? You kind of yeah. did didn't even mention it. And I'm think <laughs> I'm thinking you should probably be shipping one to Scott's house and my house next week. Scott, did you, <laughs> did you see that? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, so what, this what, is, what, uh, what just happened there? It was like Rube Goldberg design. What is that? <laughs> What, yeah, show it's a little, little bit of the smoke and mirrors of being a bartender, I guess. No, so this is a, a solid copper ice ball machine. It comes in two parts. It's it very, very heavy. Um, and this is a really cool thing. So what we do is we take a large ice cube, square cube, just like that. And it just goes in. That's it. And then what happens is, is that the copper is taking the heat from the room and it's mm -hmm. melting, this, melting this cube down into a sphere. You can actually see it melting down a little bit into it there. And we'll do, we'll go ahead and do another one here. So yeah, Scott and watch, I, Scott and I both again. failed. Scott and I both <laughs> failed chemistry. So the heating, the copper into the whatever, that doesn't work. So <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Um, but basically what we're looking to do is we wanted to create um, a large ice mold that allows for you to chill your liquid, even if you enjoy your single malt neat or with a little bit of ice that is not going to dilute quickly, but will dilute. Adding a little bit of water stretches your whiskey out and it can help you find different flavors that maybe you weren't able to find when you were tasting it neat. And having a large sphere definitely brings that temperature way down, but melts incredibly slowly because it's large. A sphere or a large cube, those all work beautifully. Um, it's the same kind of thing as if someone enjoys one cube, one small cube with their single malt. They want a little bit of that dilution and they definitely want that chill to go with it. But we've taken that cocktail, we've put it on top of the large sphere here. And I, I like garnish more for just the decoration, but there's also a little bit of flavor. Um, and I'm a huge fan of orange and orange and cinnamon and how those work well together. So I've just, I've just taken a half of a wheel of an orange 
And we're just gonna throw it right in there. It's gonna give us a little bit of a sweetness, a little bit of that citrus in there as well. And the idea of this cocktail is yes, it's something to definitely be enjoyed while you're cooking and while uh, Scott's taking you through the dish, but it's also meant to be paired with that. It goes beautifully uh, with tomatoes and creams and absolutely uh, pasta. So there's a beautiful kind of pairing that goes with that. If you find that one of these ingredients isn't for you, that's okay. There's beautiful and other ways to incorporate and make your own cocktail. The things you have to remember is you want your beautiful base spirit. I recommend the Macallan. But after that, it's about building between sweet and sour or bitter, where we were talking about our Italian vermouth or the Italian bitter in the Campari. And then that effervescence, that beautiful texture in that Prosecco. And so that's our cocktail. That's our From Tiber to Spain. From Tiber to Spain. Great. It's a beautiful cocktail. Thank you, Zach. And thank you, Dean McAllen, as well. And I think um, for those that want it, I think uh, City Meals on Wheels is going to send a little email out, follow up, so we can send again the exact recipe if you if you missed anything tonight. I know Scott is chomping at the bit, but it's not your turn yet, Scott. So just keep working on the nudie. Um, and we're going to get on with the show. We're obviously here to have a great time, uh, have a great cooking demo, learn about a great cocktail, hang out with some old friends and new friends. But uh, this is supporting our good friends at City Meals on Wheels and the amazing work they do uh, in New York. And so let's bring out our good friend, Beth Shapiro, who is the executive director. For those of you that are unfamiliar with our program and might've just gotten an email, now you can really learn about everything that we do. So uh, let's take it away, Beth. Thank you, Billy and Scott Thanks, and Beth. Zach. Zach, I'm waiting to make my drink until after my little part here. So it's <laughs> all with, I infused overnight. So we'll see how strong my vermouth great. is. It's going to be great. Um, thank you. So thank you all for being here. Just a little background on City Meals. We provide over 2 million meals a year to homebound elderly New Yorkers, people too frail to shop or cook for themselves, about 20,000 older New Yorkers now. In the face of COVID, we went into action immediately. We actually added over 34,000 older New Yorkers who needed food. We have delivered over 1.4 million meals since the beginning of COVID. Half of those are emergency meals, shelf stable that can sit on, you know, sit in the cabinet for, for the day when someone needs it and they can't get out. Um, so every penny that you all donated to be here tonight will go to meal preparation and delivery. And we are thrilled to have you here and to support our emergency efforts for City Meals. And Scott has delivered meals. Actually, Scott, I think the first time I delivered with you was right after Hurricane Sandy or shortly after. And you know, we thought that was bad and it was isolated and this has just taken us to a whole new level. So thank you very much for being here. And Billy, you were with us right before the city shut down at yeah, an event. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally days before. So, um, Thank you both. And I think everyone really wants to have a good time. So Scott, we're handing to you. Awesome. Yeah, Scott Conan, everybody. Uh, I know everyone knows Scott, besides being a, a great chef, a dear friend, and a, a real great humanitarian and supports so many organizations and especially City Meals on Wheels. Coming to you live from the kitchen in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and uh, I think we're doing a ricotta nudi with butter and rustic tomatoes. So mm -hmm. chef, I will shut up, which is hard for me to do and I will let you take over. Billy, I don't believe that you will shut up for a second. Okay? <laughs> I will not. <laughs> you may mute yourself and just continue talking, but <laughs> I know you too well. Uh, you know, I've been a long time supporter of, uh, of City Meals and um, I really appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with all of you. So uh, thank you. And I know Bob Grimes is in there somewhere and I want to give a shout out to Bob uh, for asking me to do this and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just, again, I'm just, I'm really honored to support. And we did deliver um, some, some food early on when he started doing that to some, uh, we were cooking the food and then delivering it to, to some, some, some of the elderly. And I'll tell you, it was such a touching, memorable experience. Um, some, of these, some of these people sit in their homes waiting for this delivery and they're just so incredibly appreciative. Uh, and what you do, uh, Beth, Bob, and all of you, it's just really, it's really touching. You're doing God's work. So um, it's great to be a part of it. Thank you. Let's make some nudie, shall we? Let's get nudie. Let's get nudie. <laughs> nudie, in case anyone is wondering, nudie is uh, like a ravioli, but without the pasta. So it's a naked ravioli, hence the name nudie. 
So I think a couple of things that we asked you to do was have peeled seeded tomatoes. And if you wanna take those tomatoes while we're talking and cut them into six, and that's what I did here. I think there were five or six uh, tomatoes for the, for the recipe. Um, plum tomatoes, I always like to buy my plum tomatoes um, and let them sit at room temperature uh, for a couple of days so they really develop that flavor. So I have mine peeled and seeded. If you don't have yours peeled and seeded, you're breaking the rules. You're breaking the rules. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. So, uh, we, so I have mine. We're going to get to that momentarily. Uh, also, I asked if you could have that dough made for the nudie itself. So you have all the ingredients, the flour and the semolina. If you don't have semolina, uh, you could use flour. Okay, so just, just for the record, I got a, someone who was very um, panicked because they didn't have semolina, they couldn't find it, but it's easy to do. What I like to do with these nudies, is I put them, I make them, put them on a bed of semolina and I put them in the refrigerator and this is how they look. So what happens is a skin forms on this nudie overnight. And then what happens when you cook them, that skin, uh, it doesn't, the water doesn't permeate it clearly. And it just, it makes for a beautiful, when you, when you cut it open, there's a beautiful skin on the exterior and the inside is this delicious, uh, lush ricotta filling, which just has a great palatability and mouthfeel. So uh, that is a good, that is a good thing. While that, so that's done. What I want to take, what I did is I took a little ice cream scooper like this and I just put a little, about three quarters in the size that I have. I don't know what size this is, I'm sorry. I should have, I should know that, I don't know. But I made them about a little smaller than a golf ball, just so you know. And I, what I did is I was doing that while Billy was talking seemingly forever. And I just, um, and I just- You had to get, you um, had to get that in there, didn't you? So I would invite you to do that while we're doing these other things. A lot of you I see have two people that are uh, cooking today. So I would say one of them should be making the nudie uh, rolling them out nicely. And then the other person, if you have someone else, we can get to making the tomato sauce and the butter sauce as well. So, all right. I, pardon me, I, I had surgery on my thumb the other day. So that's why I'm wearing this glove. I'm not doing some kind of Michael Jackson homage. That's not what I'm yeah. doing, just a little. Just Hitch a little. Hitchhiking through the Arizona desert could be challenging, right, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> So exactly. while, while I got you laughing, we have a, we have a couple quick questions. So they, one person wanted to know, Jacob wants to know what consistency should the nudie be? I know you were kind of explaining it, but uh, kind of the consistency. So the consistency should be similar to, um, you know, what it is, is we caught that with a, with a lot of breadcrumbs and semolina flour, right? So right. Uh, when you mix that up, what I always like to do to be sure that they're done perfectly is before I dry them out overnight, I test one. Because I, it's happened to me, long story short, I made gnocchi one time. Well, I had, a, I had a restaurant years ago and I was going through a review period. It was a brand new restaurant. And I had a, long, a guy who's worked with me for 25 years in a bunch of different restaurants. And he made the gnocchi and then he didn't test it. He went home for the day and that evening I had William Grimes come from the New York Times and he ordered the gnocchi. And of course it's a review, it's a restaurant review. And as I was cooking for William Grimes, I put the gnocchi in the pasta water and don't you know, it just, just disappeared like a cloud in the water. And so since then, <laughs> it has become mandatory. Whenever we make something that's a dough like this, um, nudie, gnocchi, uh, any other kind of uh, dumpling, uh, we always test them before we go and make everything. So I was testing them earlier. They, this, this works really well. The recipe that we gave you is really, I promise, it's wonderful. It works very nicely. So uh, that consistency, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's like the cocktail with a bunch of breadcrumbs in it, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and good. someone also asked, Scott, while wow, that's a perfect follow-up, is there an alternative for ricotta or is, is nudie specifically done with ricotta? So traditionally it is done with ricotta. Uh, you can, I use mascarpone in this also, as you notice the recipe. I just love that deep richness that the mascarpone and that mouthfeel that mascarpone gives. Uh, if you don't have 
uh, leave Kotha. If you can't find any, I would suggest probably moving to a different place because that's just crazy. <laughs> Cheese. Yeah, so pe people were asking if is there a, la a lactose intolerant version of this, but I guess you should probably yeah. maybe have a different dish. I can only do so much, folks. I, I'm, yeah. I'm a chef, I'm not a magician. <laughs> yeah, roast a, ch roast a chicken, right, everybody? Just roast, roast a, a nice chicken. Yeah, have a roasted chicken. It's delicious. Uh, <laughs> they, we'll do that next time. We'll roast the chicken together. Um, and last question, because they're just feeding them to me as they come through. There's so many people on here. Do gnocchi and nudie just fall in the dumpling category? I mean, they're really kind of the same, but different. That's exactly right. It's a, it's a category of dumpling. So they would call ricotta, like a, a, a ricotta dumpling or gnocchi di ricotta. Gnocchi essentially is, a, is, a, is, a, is another word for, for dumpling and that's the category that this falls under, exactly. So Perfect. they would call gnocchi di patate, which is a potato dumpling, obviously. Great. All right, let's move on, Chef. Let's move on, shall we? Okay, in this pot, I have some heavy cream. I have a cup of heavy cream, right? I, I, I would invite you to scald that right now, get it really hot, put it in a, in a pan. I have some butter that I've cubed up here, just a little bit, uh, just a little bit of butter. And I have, uh, I put a little bit of salt in that cream. I have some, I have about three tablespoons of water here. And I have, a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm just gonna add that cornstarch directly to the water and I'm gonna use my finger to dissolve it. Now, when working with cornstarch, this is very important because you don't wanna get these lumps, right? If it is, uh, if you don't dissolve it with your fingers, you run the risk of potentially getting these little pellets of cornstarch in your sauce and you don't wanna do that. So I use my fingers to make sure that everything is absorbed nicely. My cream is scalded. I can smell it. it smells good, looks good. While that is cooking, coming to a boil like that, I am going to whisk in this cornstarch mixture. Everybody, there's a little frenzy going on over here. If I'm going too fast, I'll pause for a second. I'll just, I'll wait. You guys good? Are you ready for the next step? You're, you're rolling your nudie out. No, I got a thumbs down. Don't go yet. Is that what I, is that? Some people are just, some people are just drinking scotch right now and just listening to yeah, you. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would be doing too. I don't blame it's, you. It's, exactly. Right. I got the cream coming to a boil here. I have the cornstarch with the three tablespoons of water. We are going to mix this together. I'm just going to pour that in and it is quickly, very quickly going to start, going to start to thicken. While that is thickening, I am slowly going to whisk in, this is how it looks, right? It's very thick. You see the consistency of it there? All right, while that is thickened, I'm going to add very slowly the butter inside. I'm going to add in about a quarter of that, a quarter of a pound of butter, and I'm going to, I'm going to stir it to make sure that it's emulsified nicely. And if it gets too thick, you could add a little bit of water. So this is unsalted butter. Just whisking in. That's emulsified. I'm going to add another quarter or so, quarter pound, give or take. Now, Scott, Scott, with a dish like this, is it good to use unsalted butter and just salt to flavor uh, along the way as you're cooking? Yeah, you know, the salted butter, I like to always use as a rule of thumb unsalted butter and then season myself. I don't want anybody else seasoning my stuff. I'll season my stuff. That makes sense? Good point. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Also, everyone was asking, could you bang the pans a little louder? It's good on the microphone. It's I, good I, on I, the microphone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm doing my best there, folks. We're cooking from home, you know? All right. We are. I am uh, I'm gonna continue to add this butter and stir it up nicely. I think what I'm gonna do is utilize what I like to do with this pasta cooking liquid. So I call it pasta cooking liquid. Hold on, let me get a ladle. This pasta water, you know, I put enough salt in this so it tastes like broth. And I'm gonna utilize a little bit of this inside because it's getting a little thick, but there's a tremendous amount of flavor in that pasta water. So it's, uh, 
It's valuable stuff. I would say it's valuable. Uh, you don't want to bring this to a boil once you start to emulsify the butter inside of it because it will break. Okay, and one of the yep. reasons why we use the cornstarch is it has a little bit more um, stability, but it will break if you bring it to a boil. Got it. All right, Scott, we're gonna we're gonna backtrack a tad because we have so many people cooking, so we're gonna kind of go through a little. Number one, what we everyone would love you to do. Can you just kind of talk us through where we started to where we're at again right now for the people that feel a little bit lost? Oh so let's walk us through that. I don't want anybody to be lost. Okay, so what I've done is I've scalded the cream, right, with a pinch of salt inside. Yep. I dissolved the cornstarch in a little bit of water. And then as I, I thickened that, uh, that cream with that uh, cornstarch in the water, and I whisked it all together. So once it started to thicken, which I had showed you, then I took the cubed butter and I added about four ounces, quarter of a pound uh, at a time, whisking it in over a very, very low flame on the stove here. Great. Banging my pan as much as possible. Yeah, of course. Uh, someone, someone asked, is it the whole pound of butter so far? Are we getting to that? So that was- I, Yeah, that you're, ordering, you're, you're adding it about a quarter of a pound at a time. I just finished all my butter, so that's done. That, Perfect, that. butter's in, and people are re-questioning again about the salt. So once again, folks, Scott is using unsalted butter because he doesn't want anyone to do his seasoning, which is a good chef tip for cooking with unsalted butter because then you have someone seasoning whatever you're making. This way you can season it on your own if you get unsalted butter. I, and I will to taste. Even my own stuff, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate appreciate the help, but you know, thank you. No, thank you. So someone that, wanted to know. Uh, hang on, they wanted to know if they should cut the portion in half, or if because there's only two of them, or should they make the whole thing and have lunch for tomorrow? You can do whatever you want. That's your business. Now this is what this is what <laughs> I'm making. I'm show you what I'm making. I'm not going to go in there and start fixing <laughs> everybody else's stuff. <laughs> All right, just checking. You heard you heard that from the man. This delicious sauce. Look at this. I'm going to get up close so you see how beautiful that is. See that Beautiful. nice consistency? If you want to cut these recipes in half, by all means, cut them in half. That's fine. Beautiful. See how beautiful and creamy that is. It's delicious. And you know the best part, Billy? Not a single calorie. Nothing. All that that cream, not a single calorie. It's magic. Amazing. Butter, cream, and salt. It's delicious. I might as well just glue it onto my waist. <laughs> Scott Conant, my friend. Scott Conant. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. We got that done. Right? Let's make the tomato sauce, shall we? Are you ready? Next step. Are you guys okay? Yeah, they're doing yes. okay. Let's no. let's check in. I'm gonna check terrible. in on a couple people you're, here. Cheryl, you're, you're, I, feel, I feel terrible. You're stressing out over there. What can, what can I do to ease your, are you okay? All right, good. Cheryl's all right. Thumbs Cheryl's up. up. Everybody else all ready right. for the next step? You got your nudie all rolled out, Lisa? I see that, well done, beautiful. Thank you. Good. Janine, I see your nudie all rolled out. That looks awesome. Scott, should people, should people refrigerate the nudie? You can refrigerate them right now. We're gonna cook them momentarily. Um, so I don't think you need to, unless it's like 125 degrees in your kitchen. Exactly. Um, but uh, so yeah, don't you don't have to refrigerate them. Just keep them with the. How's everybody's cocktails? Everybody, anybody need to make another cocktail? Zach is there waiting patiently if he needs to make more drinks for everyone. Exactly. <laughs> Zach, you're a dapper, my friend. You look fantastic. Well done. Good stuff. All right, I got pasta water. Your pasta water is it at a boil? Is everybody's pasta water at a boil? We're gonna use it pretty soon. Make sure it's nice and hot. We're, we're not gonna use it yet, but we're gonna use it in a little while. Okay, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up, I see that. All right, we have, in this pot, we're gonna make the tomatoes. Are we ready for that? Thumbs up on the tomatoes? All right. Someone wants to know, do they take the butter off the heat? Good question. Does that all come off the heat right now? It yes. off the heat, yeah. Take it off the heat, move it to the side. I'm sorry, I thought I mentioned that. Apologize. Got it. All right, kids. So take the butter off the heat. And do they have to keep stirring the creamer? Or you looks like you're letting it rest right now. 
it's just chilling over there and it's relaxing. It's, everything is inside. It's off the heat. It's emulsified. It looks good. It sees no more heat at the moment. All right. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Tomatoes. I have a pot. I have olive oil. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. You have your recipes. So, um, I, I don't, I never follow recipes. So it's two tablespoons of, uh, of olive oil. You have your tomatoes, your jarred tomato sauce, if you want to use that, right? You have your five plum tomatoes that are peeled, seeded, and chopped into eighths. I said six earlier, but a six, whatever you, however you're comfortable. Uh, a little red wine vinegar, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of crushed red pepper, red pepper flakes, a little bit of concentrated tomato or tomato paste, and a few torn basil leaves. I got some. I got some basil leaves. All right. Everybody feel good? We're going to start the tomato sauce. This, I got this on a medium heat, medium high, because I thought it was on, it was off. So medium, <laughs> medium high heat, I'm going to catch it up. Any other questions at the moment, Billy, before we start this? Uh, let me just double check here once again. We know what to do. Someone said they didn't peel the tomatoes. Is that okay, or do they need yeah, to I mean, if you don't mind the skins in your tomatoes, it's fine. You could just dice them up. If you don't mind the seeds, that's cool, too. I, I, just, I just like the luxurious silkiness of the way these cook up without the seeds or uh, peel. What I've also done is that residual juice that's left over when you squeeze the seeds out, I've strained it in, back into these tomatoes. So there's no seeds. Well, there's a few seeds, there's, but I've strained out all the seeds. I've taken off all the peel. Gavish, everybody good? Gavish, Gavish. Uh, someone wanted to know about how many nudi from this recipe should there be? They didn't know if they were making them too small. Three, four, six, this is a public school education in Connecticut right now, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Conan cooking the nudi. I got about 40, 40 to 45. How about that? Uh, is that good? You guys good with that? And this is easy. You know, you can serve between four to six per portion. You do the math. How many people that can feed? I'm Connecticut vocational school, not even a, not even public school, Billy. Vocational school, it's even worse. Vocational school, it's even worse. <laughs> All right. I got you, you, you knew how to jumpstart a car when you were 12. Well, I learned that at eight, so yeah, but that's Waterbury. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna add the tomatoes. While that is cooking, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Because like I said, we don't like anybody seasoning our, seasoning our food for us. I'm gonna add a pinch of crushed red pepper. I'm gonna allow that to cook nicely. This is good stuff. Let me tell you something. This, these tomatoes could become part of your home repertoire. These are really, this is a great way to cook your tomatoes. It has, a, you, could, you could omit the sugar, you could omit the vinegar, but I just happen to like cooking my tomatoes like this. I use baby tomatoes this way, or, you know, heirloom tomatoes, the baby heirloom tomatoes that you see in a lot of stores these days. It's all, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can utilize this product. It's a, I think it's, I think they're delicious, but you know, use your, use your best. I see Jeffrey and Elizabeth there. It's nice to see you guys. How are you? Jeffrey and Elizabeth were customers of mine years and years ago at a restaurant called Chianti. Mel's here too. She wants to say hi to you. So <laughs> Mel's my wife. And Jeffrey and Elizabeth came to our wedding in Turkey and stuff like that. It's great to see you guys. Great to see you. It's like old, it's like old homecoming here. All right, so we are cooking these tomatoes. I have a little crushed red pepper in there, a little bit of salt, all the juices um, being released from the tomatoes. So it's cooking in its own juices right now. Everybody got that? We're good so far? We are good. Thumbs up. Okay, so we're gonna cook that. It's gonna cook for a little while, seven, seven eight minutes, something like that. That's going very nicely, I think. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of this jarred sauce or, or a couple, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever you got, half a cup, whatever it is, whatever the recipe says. I'm gonna add a little bit of that just to stretch it out, really kind of freshen up that jarred sauce. That's why I have a sauce 
called spreza. It's a pomodoro sauce that I, it's a recipe I've used for years and years. Uh, that's what I'm using. That's what I'm using here. I'm gonna add a, this little bit of sugar as well. And I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar as well, so just to kind of amp up the sweetness and a little bit of that sour there with the freshness of the tomato. Yeah, that was the next question we actually got, which you're doing right now about adding the vinegar and the uh, sugar. And okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of this tomato paste as well to help thicken it up a little bit. Right. And a medium heat on this, Scott? What's what's temp? What are we cooking at? Medium heat? Right now I'm at medium high. All right. And I'm just gonna cook this down. This is gonna cook while I drop. I know we you know we, we got limited time here, so I wanna I'm gonna rush this a touch. I apologize. You know, you get Billy to start talking about things. He doesn't stop. I don't yeah. know if you know. <laughs> we should have been done 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I know. I got a nap waiting for me over here. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the, the, the water is boiling. I'm going to drop some nudie. I'm not going to drop well, them all. My, my yeah, don't drop them all yet. People were asking about, before you drop the nudie, people said, yeah. ooh, no black pepper. And there's no pepper in this dish, right? That's too much I, of a spice, I used, right? I used crushed red pepper. I don't like black pepper. You know, salt, salt and pepper don't always belong together. Anne Burrell always says, sale, pepe, they're not necessarily always have to be together and married, right? So, and I, right. I, I think she's right. Otherwise, I wouldn't quote her. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's crushed red pepper in here. I think, I think that's great. That's a great backdrop of flavor, not necessarily just the spice, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody good? Everybody's great. I'm gonna drop a few of the, I have this, this calorie flip free butter sauce. Yeah. Right, a little bit in the pan. Delicious. Just like mom used to make, Billy, remember? Yeah. There's a, jo there's a joke there, but it's a clean show. So I'll just leave that one at that. Family show. Um, family, family show. show. Some people actually already asked with the buttercream sauce like that, which I guess goes on so many great Italian dishes, but someone already wanted to know if they have extra sauce, what would be your go-to, boom, what, what do they use that on tomorrow? Like a fettuccine or something else? What do they do? For any, any pasta, you want to toss it in that sauce, add a ton of Parmesan cheese to it, that is your fettuccine Alfredo. Yeah, done, right? right. Or, um, or you can give it to your neighbors because, you know, yeah. You could be a good neighbor or exactly. not. It's up to you. I am going to add some of these basil leaves to this tomato at this point. Has anyone tasted this yet? Yeah. Are you guys tasting while you're cooking along? Oh my God, that is the case. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I've never made that before. It's really good. <laughs> I'm just yeah. have, you, have you done this before? <laughs> I got. Five basil leaves or so, and I've just torn them up, cut them a little bit, or torn them by hand, and I'm just adding them into, into that sauce. Oh, wow. This is, this is really nice. This is coming together nicely. All right, let's add some nudie to the water, shall we? You guys ready to add the pasta to the water? Thumbs up. Everybody ready? Okay, I'm gonna add just a few. I'm going to save this for my daughters when they come home from school. So this is going to be dinner for them. So I'm not going to cook it all right now. So I got a few. I'm going to add it in. That's going to, now, this is going to come to a float. It's going to, sitting inside the water. The water is salted like broth. Remember, it tastes like broth. It doesn't taste like the ocean. It tastes like broth. The reason why I want it to taste like broth is I may have to use it in this sauce to thin it out. So if it tastes like the ocean, it's too much salt and it's gonna ruin the whole dish. Does that make sense? Yep. That's a little tip, that's a little Scotty tip for everybody. All right, we're good. I'm turning my tomatoes down a little bit because they're really boiling heavily. I'm gonna add just a little pan on top of that so it doesn't splatter, because I hate cleaning up the kitchen. So I don't, I don't wanna have to, I don't have to do that. So I'm just gonna add that thing. It's still reducing, there's a release of the steam but what we have is 
not splattering all over the place. All right, the, the nudie is in the water right now. It's just hopefully gonna boil soon. It's gonna boil again, I'm gonna cover it back up. Any questions at the moment, Billy? Yeah, so people just, they asked if they missed, the, like, what do they do after the tomatoes are cooked? So the tomatoes are just simmering on, the, on your burner right now, right? Just covered up, nice and low. They're in a medium heat. I really want that residual liquid inside those tomatoes to really boil down. So that yep. when I top this nudie with those tomatoes, you have dueling sauces. You have the butter sauce with the nudie, and then you have that beautiful, bright tomato sauce as well, which is gonna add a lot to the dish but you have that beautiful texture of the ricotta, the great flavor of the butter and Parmesan cheese that we're gonna put on top of there, and then the bright acidic sweet tomato as well. So there's a lot going on. And then of course, when you drink the delicious McAllen drink that Zach created along with it. As we cool. say in my country, Billy, forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> uh, is, should the water be boiling? Sharon wants to know, is it boiling when you drop in the nudie? It should, should be boiling. Water. Okay, yep. so boil, boiling water, everybody. There's a lot of people cooking here. Yeah. So someone you, else someone else just came back and said, was it really the whole pound of butter? And we're like, yes, it's the whole pound of butter. It is the whole <laughs> pound of butter. It's in there. It's, it's in there. So, all right. So I have that ladle. I'm going to take a little bit of this pasta cooking liquid and just add it to that butter sauce again. So that, yeah, just a touch, right? Because I want that... What's gonna happen is I'm gonna take the nudie out of this water, put it in this butter sauce, and just very slowly simmer it together. So what happens is that butter is gonna absorb into that nudie and make it also have zero calories. Zero. Again, magic. This whole, this whole dish is like eating celery. You'll actually look better and lose weight when you're done. That's exactly right. That's right, you've been reading <laughs> my mind. Yeah. Boom. So, thank you. so Tomatoes are reducing down beautifully. You see the beautiful color on those tomatoes? Look how nice and red they are. Oh my God. Delicious. That Scott, how long, how long are the nudity gonna be in the water? That we're a bunch of people asking that, right? Seven minutes or so. Okay. I'm just throwing stuff up. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a matzo ball, you know, except it's made with cheese. So you see them, I'm taking them out of the water. I'm gonna put them in this butter sauce. I'm gonna baste them nicely. As soon as I take them out, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna move this pot of water so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And they are delicate, so be careful with them. But they're worth it. Delicate, but worth it. All right, let me, let me move this out of the way. So over a very, a medium, a medium low flame, I have these nudie sitting in this butter. Do you see that? Look at, look at what I got there. See that? Look at that. All right. We're gonna baste them nicely. I want, really want that sauce to cook into the, into the nudie themselves. Scott, while you're doing that, I'm, I'm gonna uh, hang on. I'm gonna check in with some of our guests real quick. See how everyone's doing. Let's see where everyone's from. Let's see. Allison, is it is it Dizini? Am I pronounced? Diz, I'm trying. Diz, I think it's Dizini. It's Dizini. Very close. Uh, we're close. here from New York City, Upper West Side. Fantastic. How's the cooking coming along? Pretty Could, good. Couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's doing all of it. So a little sarcasm there. Any questions for uh, Chef while we're at it? No, I think we're, we're good. good. But we were just at Scarpetta in Montauk uh, about a month or two ago. Love so it. I I haven't been involved in Scarpetta in about seven or eight years or so. so. Uh, he, he left he left Scarpetta in 1978, but it's still a delicious <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. So, oh, well. yeah, it was pretty good. But they're still using my recipes, and I hope you had a good meal. Exactly. Good, good. Well, yeah. thank you for being here tonight. All right, I'm gonna check on with a couple other people. Jeffrey Wozni, I know these are good friends here saying hello. Let's check yeah. in with Jeffrey Wozni. How you guys doing? Hang on, ask to unmute one more time. 
button here. Hey, we're, yes, we're doing great. There we go. Yeah, That's we're here, great. Naples, Florida. It's great to see you guys. It's so great to see you and Mel. I love to all of you and the kids. Love you guys. Hopefully we'll see you soon. We're wandering across a-, a uh, An airport. In, in Naples. Yeah, That's you got it. To each other. Exactly. Right. right. <laughs> I'm going to take Parmesan cheese over the top of this before I start to plate it up. All right, back to chef. Here we go. Sorry. Nope, it's all good. All right. The, the tomato sauce is cooking down nicely. I've added the Parmesan cheese. Once I add cheese to this, it sees no more heat. We don't want to change the, uh, the texture of what that cheese is. Tomato sauce still cooking. This is done. All right, ready? We're gonna to start to plate this up. All right, we're just gonna do a couple in the plate. So. And chef, for some good cooking lessons here, for the people that the, the nudie was really loose and it broke apart, what, what, when they redo this again, what do they need to change if it was too loose? I would add a little bit more flour or semolina inside that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think you, you'll end up with something really, really special. Um, and again, add a little flour, check it, make sure that it's, that it's working well. You know, what, and what I mean by checking it is test it. Cook, cook a little piece, make one nudie, or one noodle as the case may be. Make one, boil it, check it, make sure it's holding together. If it's not holding together, add a little bit more flour, fold it together again, and try it one more time. Or semolina as the case may be. All right. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. I have these tomatoes. I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of this sauce. And is this sort of dough last well in the freezer, Scott, if they wanna make some more later or is it rough? I wouldn't, I wouldn't freeze it because it's not gonna come together, but you, you could definitely, um, you could definitely put it in the cooler and, you know, use it in a couple days. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. All right. I got some beautiful basil we're going to add on top of here, just a, around the dish in a couple different places. And that... Was, was, was there a little time that was used earlier? Was there time as oh, well? Yeah, I forgot to put the time in the butter. Oh, my God. Yes. But <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. I thought, oh, my God. I bought time too. I have it in the refrigerator. I forgot to put it in the butter. You'll be happy to know it's not going to change the flavor that much. The, it would give a great flavor to the butter, but you're not missing anything. If you want to take the time now, throw it in the butter sauce. Or not. Whatever you want to do. Can we see that dish? Is that your finished plate? This is the finished plate, Chef. Hold, hold on. All right. I'm, I already have a wife, Billy. All right, I don't yeah, need you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is the finished plate. I don't know if you can see that. I'm Delicious. Getting, Cheryl's giving me uh, giving me a, a hand. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. How does it look? Does you guys look? Look at those tomatoes. Don't they look beautiful? They look those great. Look? It's matzo ball soup for Italians. It's 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 Italian matzo ball soup with ricotta. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. All right, let's taste it. Let's give it the, let's give it the, Billy, I'll take a bite for you, don't worry. Please, please do. Hey, that came out pretty good. Not bad, right? Have you made that before? Wow. That's a good one. I got lucky. I got lucky on that. Billy, we have any questions that I haven't gotten to? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Someone just said, should it look like a matzo ball or should it look like a ravioli? I'd say it should look like a matzo ball, right? It should look like a matzo ball. That's what the ravioli would look like if it didn't have the pasta on the outside. It would look like a matzo ball. Got it. Uh, once again, how long do you cook the nudie and then add the butter to the sauce? It was just a couple minutes in the water, right? Two, three minutes? About seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes, give or take. Okay. Someone said theirs was small like gnocchi, so they made another dish tonight, I guess, right? Yeah, so, sounds delicious. Uh, I'm going through some last, last few minute questions here. What's that, Scott? I'm trying to see what the, what, who just held that up. Yeah, hold up your dishes. I see Janine's. Danny, I see... 
Janine Danny Ross. Great. Yeah, Danny Ralston. That looks great. Looks I'm going to unmute Danny Ralston. Let's check with Danny. Sue Jacobs looks good. It looks really good. Thank you, Chef. Appreciate the compliment. Well done. <laughs> if you need a job, I, I, I know a guy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Ariel Kaufman. Can I unmute myself to ask the questions about the tomato sauce? Let me find you, Ariel, and I will unmute you. I have the power. You are now unmuted. Where's Ariel? Hi. Hi. Ariel, is that, a Sox, is that a Red Sox shirt? Oh my God. Did I cancel it? Should I just close my Zoom? Yeah, you should pretty much burn your laptop right now. Maybe throw it out the window. <laughs> Sage it. It's, it's all good. We'll, we'll but, um, for you. you seem nice. What's thank you. What's up? I have a quick question about one of your pasta sauces. It's like a tomato sauce. You did it on the best thing I ever ate. And it was, I think it was a scarpetta sauce. Obviously, you don't, uh, you're not affiliated with the restaurant anymore. It's but a, um, it's a tomato basil sauce. Yeah, it was a tomato basil with the, like, you infused olive oil. But I think I have a problem with my tomato sauce. I mean, I guess maybe is it the tomato because it's not getting that taste no matter how long I cook it for. Do you use canned tomatoes or fresh tomatoes? Fresh tomatoes. So same type of thing that we're doing here with this, except we crush those tomatoes up with the- In like a food mill? Not in a food mill, but with a- um, Mashed potato thingy? Uh, <laughs> That's another technical name. <laughs> yeah. here, I try. Potato masher. That is the mashed, oh, she just said the oh, mashed yeah. potato thingy. Right? Yeah, that is correct. Thingy. It's anonymous. Hold on. Hold on. And then you infuse the oil like it's a tea. I made some earlier for, for, for Rachel okay. Ray. So see how that looks? That yeah, and how long do you infuse it for? I infuse it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes at the most really, really low temperature. And just imagine that that oil is, uh, the, the garlic, the crushed pepper, and the basil is just infusing that olive oil like, like a tea, like tea would. Okay, right? got it. And, and that's, and that's the flavor. And then you strain that into the tomatoes. And then you cook those tomatoes for about 45 minutes to an hour at the most. Got it. So basically crushing, crushing, them, peppers, the time, you know. yeah, crushing them the whole time. Obviously, they're de-seeded and um, the skin yeah. peeled off. But then yeah. while you're cooking it, essentially, and then after you add the oil. Yes, chef. Right? Thank you so much. I appreciate Perfect. it. Yeah, Ariel, no, no more questions for Red Sox fans. Yeah, she gets no more questions, Scott. She's, no more <laughs> questions. YouTube, there's... There's videos on YouTube. Yeah, check it out. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you, Ariel. We appreciate it. Someone just asked, does the butter sauce go into the red sauce? They go, I missed something. So yes, you missed something. You did totally miss something because it does <laughs> not. The idea it is, does not. Um, you know, kind of that duality of the sauces where uh, think of it as Christmas time, right? It's, it's, it's a, the white sauce, there's a red sauce and little flecks of basil all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so everyone, if you missed that, he, he put the he put the nudie in with the cream sauce and then a little base thing right there, and then the little tomatoes on top with the basil, right? So it's like a little yin and a yang. You got the cream sauce with the fresh tomatoes, spritz a little a little spritz of basil, ba boom. Really you, you understand everything, Godfather. <laughs> Godfather, exactly. Why do I deserve this? You All right. Everything. I do. At what time are we going to do? Someone wants to know about the raffle winners. Let's just see if there's any last questions, then we'll get to the raffle. Hang on, Scott. Mm -hmm. Any last minute questions, raise your hand or put it in the chat. Someone said, I'm getting a thumbs up all around for my family of six. Okay, good job. Whoa. Let's see. Anyone else, hold up your plates. I see, is it Leela, Leila, Leela? I got that. I see that right there. Oops. Lisa, I, I see that. Lisa, that looks good. Leila, awesome. Some of you have already eaten it, which is great. That means <laughs> Janine, that. Janine, good job there, Janine. You look very happy. Peace, love, well, and pasta. Grace Ann Hammer, that looks great. Hi, Grace. Fantastic. Bill, you're sucking it down like a Gavon wearing the Michigan shirt. I like that. <laughs> Let's see. We've got a lot of people on here all over the country. Mary, is it Mary Deem? Am I getting that right? Mary Deem? Wait, that looks like that could be the winning dish right here. I'm gonna unmute. Let's show us that. Yeah, to be fair, this is actually probably enough for the whole family. We just put it in one one pot. Um, I might just eat it all myself. Haven't decided, but. <laughs> it is a kid compared to the size of the 
the, the bowl. So yes, we're... well done. It's lovely. Goes to eleven. That's a great dish right there. Fantastic. Thank Beautiful. you, Mary Jean. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. You. Let's check in with Tony Diaz. Looks like you already ate it all. Let's see, Tony Diaz. Ask to unmute. They're very happy. Hang on. Ask to unmute. Here we go. Here we go. Ah! Hey guys, this turned out amazing, and our Show dog is very excited too. Sarah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. great dish. Uh, thank you for that. Wonderful, Joel. Wonderful time. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank great you. Thanks, here. Guys. Thank you. All right, guys. I think we're going to get on with the raffle. Scott, are you ready to announce the raffle winners, and then we'll have Beth uh, wrap it all up here tonight? I am. Okay. So the first winner. Uh, they are going to win a Sonia Toscano gift basket, including my sprezza tomato sauce. And that is Sharon Daniel. Sharon Daniel, show yourself. Where's Sharon Daniel? Let me find Sharon Daniel. Is this Sharon? Let's see, ask to unmute. I'm unmuting you, Sharon Daniel. <laughs> All right, well Here done. Here you go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I told my daughter we're winning tonight. You see, we won. You're winning, you're happy. You're we're happy. Too much we're gallon, but that's all right. Thank you. Happy to participate. Happy to donate. I, I love it. Well done. Um, Thank you. How about the next one? Are we ready for the next one? Sharon, I, if you uh, cook anything out of that basket, make sure you tag us all on Instagram. You we got it. What you cook, please. <laughs> Thank you. I love you on Food Network. <laughs> I'm much nicer than they make me look. I just, I just. I have to... <laughs> uh, no. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Thank you. All right, next winner. Thank One more winner. Next Scott, winner. Right? Okay, another gift basket from Sonia Toscano, including my spreads of tomato sauce, is Mr. Stephen Jelinek. Mr. Stephen Jelinek. Am I pronouncing that wrong? Correctly? I'm asking him to unmute. Where's Steve Jelinek? Unmute, please. <laughs> We hear you. Hang on. Okay, now can you hear us? We there can. Hey, Steve. Woo! Sir. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, sir? Jelinek. 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 Sorry about that. Jelinek. Perfect. The well, you, uh, you are the proud recipient of a gift basket, sir, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it, and I hope it's all the things that you love to eat. Oh, thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Well, thank this, you. This, this, was, uh, this was a terrific We just experience. finished dinner. It was, I love that. Absolutely. We will make it again. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Even better. That's great. All right. We got one more. Are we ready for that the last one? Scott. Yes. If you give me your address, I'll mail you the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need all the time I can get. That's the time. I don't have as much time as I used to, it seems. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, thank you, Jelinex. Very kind thank of you. you. All right, Scott. Perfect. All right, now the final the final uh, winner wins a private virtual tasting with the Macallan, which includes three bottles shipped directly to you. Ooh. And Scott Conant seems to have won that. My goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> Good night, <there>. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> so the winner of that uh, McAllen gift is, that's exciting. That's a wonderful gift. I, I, I want to I wanna join on that. Is Matthew Robinson. Is Matthew around? Let's see. I'm Where looking him up. Uh, did we lose you, Matthew? I see Matthew Maloney. Are you on here, Matthew Robinson? I can't find you. I'm searching everybody. Robinson. I don't think we have a Robinson on here tonight. It starts with an R. Uh, yeah. Is that what it starts with? Oh, okay, thanks, Jeff. Oh, oh. Is that you, Eileen? My husband. He is going to. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be so thrilled. That's good. Well, fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Thank did you. you guys, did you guys cook? We did. Let's see your plate. Oh, you're. you're oh, we you ate, ate the plate. Oh, you ate them. Good. We're going to make them for our one year old sons, and then we ate them instead. Well done. I think I think babies would like this. Yes. You won. You won. Matthew Robinson, we are sending you three bottles of McAllen, and you're going to have a virtual tasting with the McAllen team. That is I think, amazing. Uh, I think with Zach, who's on here, Zach, are, can you it. manage? Are you going to Zach Berger's on there in New York? He's going to arrange the private tasting. 
they're going to ship you the McAllen, and uh, there you go. And if, if if you donate some more money when we're done, they'll throw in a pony. They'll even get uh, you a as pony. As long as that <laughs> pony is filled with McAllen, I will donate whatever it takes. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Thank is that you. all our winners, Scott? That is everybody. Thank you. That's Thanks for playing. So <laughs> let's have, uh, before we say goodbye, let me just unmute Beth. Beth, some closing remarks. Hang on, unmute. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes, yep. thank you guys. This was so much fun. I wrote all my notes down. I'm going to go cook right after this. But yeah. um, want to thank everyone for joining us and let you know that November 18th at 8 o'clock, no, seven o'clock. Sorry, we're doing. We're celebrating all the accomplishments of the staff and volunteers um, during COVID, our COVID response with more than a meal and event on YouTube. So follow us Great. on social media or um, our email, and we will keep you updated. As of now, we have people performing: Meryl Streep, Sarah Jessica Parker, Liam Neeson, Christine Baranski, Jane Krakowski. On and on. It's going to be fun. And thank you again all for being here. It was really a great night. Thank you, Zach, Billy, and Scott. It was delicious and fun. Well, thank you, Beth. Scott, did we just, oh no, there he is. Thank you, Beth, so much. Thank you, the City Meals on Wheels team. Thank you, Zach Berger, the McAllen. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm Billy Harrison, Los Angeles, and I'll let Scott Conan say good night and thank you for your time. Take it away, Scott. Thank you all so much. Billy, maybe we could get in on that virtual event and uh, do a little duo. What do you think? That's what that's what I say. That's what well. I, they need You'll us. You'll be our, our best performances of the night. That's right. Billy does not mean Sinatra. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, we're in good shape. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for supporting City Meals on Wheels. And thank you, Chef Conan. Great little demo. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and go vote. Or hopefully you voted. Go vote. Good night, everybody. Thank you so good much. Good night, everyone.